All right, hey gang, so we're going to try something new here. Um, I'm going to walk you through the epithelial tissues that are in your packet and kind of point out the most important pieces of each of the tissues. Um, and if we find this helpful, we can, you know, move it on and do with uh, some of the other categories of tissues. So, so let's start right at the beginning. Okay, our first one's called simple squamous. Remember, simple means single layer. Okay, so simple, single layer, squamous, flat, and squished. Okay, now, um, only thing I don't like about this particular slide and the images that I provide is this picture here. Okay, um, that kind of it shows you that they're kind of flat, like almost like uh, floor tiles, but it doesn't show you from the side. This picture is trying to show you from the side what it would actually look like, um, but in reality, what you'd see um, would be little tiny flat cells, kind of arranged, kind of like this. Okay, um, the cool thing about simple squamous is the fact that it is the thinnest. Okay. Um, and because it's the thinnest, it's the most permeable, and we're going to use it in spots where things need to get through the cell membrane. So, uh, particularly in the linings of blood vessels, sorry, trying to do an underline there, didn't work out so well. Um, the alveoli in the lung, which was already um, highlighted there for you, so the alveoli, okay, um, right here. Uh, so the alveoli uh, are where is where you're going to have the oxygen going into the blood and the carbon dioxide coming out of the blood. Um, and you find it all sorts of other places, but those are the two most... Um, uh, important ones that will that you'll know at this point later in the year we'll talk a lot about the kidneys and we'll um, deal with that but um, those are the big pieces okay um, so simple squamous thinnest most permeable use it in a place where things need to get through right? uh, the second one down here stratified squamous so stratified again stratified we've got multiple layers right so this is much thicker much thicker simple squamous would be that thick okay so this is a whole lot thicker. Um, uh, because of that, um, it is much more protective. Okay, so uh, you find this is the whole outer covering, the barrier from the outside world. So you got your skin, you've got your lining of the mouth, you've got the um, the throat, the, so the esophagus, rectum, anus, vagina, um, all that nice thick layer that helps protect the body from uh, anything getting in or any abrasion. Um, just general protection. All right, and let's go to the next part. Okay, so here we start looking at some of the cuboidal ones. So simple cuboidal is pretty common, guys. Again, single layer, cube-shaped cells. So you can see the nice simple cube shape, right? Single layer, cube shaped. Okay, um, what uh, where you typically find that is in the glands and the ducts. Okay, so glands and the ducts, um, and it doesn't really do much in the way of protection, guys. It's not terribly protective. Um, simply because it's pretty thin too. Uh, it's the second most thin of the, t the epithelial tissues, but it is really well designed to secrete and absorb. Okay, so you'll find this making whatever secretion. So in a, um, a sweat gland, it'll make the sweat and it, as part of the gland, and then it'll also be part of the duct where the um, the sweat is secreted out into the surface of your body. Okay. Below it, stratified cuboidal, okay, same basic idea, guys, it's pretty much the exact same tissue, but it's got multiple layers, which means it's going to be thicker and more protective, okay, so you didn't really get protection above, now you get it here, okay, you don't see it very often, guys, it's pretty rare, which is I kind of marked there for you, okay, it's pretty rare, uh, but usually on the outside of the body, you'll see some of these, um, and you can imagine that if this was like, say, a, a sweat gland on the surface of your body, and a bacteria were crawling down inside here, trying to um, go down through this tube and use that as a weight into your body, having a thicker wall would help protect you. Okay, so stratified cuboidal, simple cuboidal, same idea, except for stratified is a little bit more protective because there's, it's thicker. Right? Uh, transitional, getting down here, transitional is cool. Okay, now transitional is called transitional because it will actually change in thickness. When the bladder is empty, it's nice and thick like this. When the bladder is full, it becomes much more thin, okay? Uh, essentially, as the bladder fills, it, the, the walls get stretched thin, okay? Uh, really, the only place we'll talk about it this year will be the bladder, so as for as far as location, that's the easiest one, and it allows stretching out of all the epithelial tissues. Um, it allows stretching, so you got this location in the bladder, and allows the bladder to stretch. All right, last three, okay? So simple columnar, single layer, column shaped, okay? Simple columnar. Nice and easy, right? Um, what's cool about the simple columnar is the microvilli. Okay, so microvilli 
are all these folds on the surface. So if you looked at the surface and we zoomed in on this right here, what you would see would be fold after fold after fold after fold after fold. And on those folds, if you were to zoom in really close on here, okay, what you'd see would be more folds and more folds and more folds and more folds. Okay, so the surface area is just absolutely amazing. Um, and the reason we care about that is the more surface area, the better at absorption, which is really its main function, okay? So the whole line in your digestive tract is filled with this columnar because it's really, really, really good at absorption, all right? Down below, pseudostratified. That's how this is pronounced. Everybody struggles with it. Pseudo, like pseudo, remember, uh, pseudonym in your English class is a, is a pen name, okay? Pseudostratified means fake stratified. Okay, so if it's not stratified, it's actually simple, right? So it's a single layer. Um, if you look over here, what's confusing about it is things like this. See how there's like a nucleus there and there's a nucleus here? They look like they're stacked on top of each other. But in reality, what you would actually see would be something like this. So this might be one cell. And then here would be another one. And they're kind of twisted behind each other. Okay? Now, that wouldn't be terribly confusing, but if the microscope's a little bit blurry, and you had a nucleus, say, right here, you got a nucleus, and here you got a nucleus, and that were a little bit blurry, you might think that you've got one layer and two layers, okay? So, it's tricky. It's fake stratified. It's really only one cell layer thick, so it's pseudo-stratified. The key is this, though. Ciliated. The cilia up top here, guys, are the key. Um, the cilia, these little hairs on the surface, okay, little hairs all along the surface, and they're there for moving stuff along. So in your airways, they actually move the mucus, clean the mucus out of your airways. Um, in the reproductive tract, they actually push the egg um, down from the ovary, down the fallopian tubes, down towards the uterus for fertilization, um, but they actually shove things along. So there's like a little whip-like whip action from these little hairs um, moving across there. Right? All right, final one, stratified, multiple layers, columna, okay, right away, you, should, you ought to be thinking thick, because columnar cells are pretty thick by themselves, and there's multiple layers, so it's pretty thick, which automatically makes it good at protection, guys. If it's thick, it's there to protect, okay? Um, you don't see too many spots, guys, but the, the pretty good list of them over here, okay? Um, you know, the epiglottis, the anus, the mammary gland, um, but the key is multiple layers, Column, uh, column shaped, uh, and that it's really good at protection. So hopefully this helps. Um, I'll look for some feedback from you in class, and we'll figure it out if it's useful. I can do this with the uh, and follow it up with connected tissues and muscular and nervous as well. All right.